wisdom to you, some insight, some understanding. Someone say amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, if all the fire carriers that are present, go over, invite, invite, invite. I want you to invite someone in. Invite someone in. Thank you very much. I see Sister Barbara, Sister Amanda, Sister Charmaine, I think Apostle Dupree. A few more family members have already gone in and you have invited. I salute you. Bless everyone that has invited. Please continue to do so. Now, this is a very important topic that we are about to talk about. Right? And today we are going to be talking about operating in God's permissive will. And then I actually added it and asked, does this make sense? Or is this possible? Is it possible to operate in God's permissive will? Yes, but I just want a yes or no for now until we go in. Do you think it is possible to operate in God's permissive will? No. Or does no? Let's say it differently. Does God have a permissive will? No, sir. Anyone else? I say yes. Okay. So we have yes, we have no. And that's the reason why we're going to be having this thing. Because it is, actually, Sister Ava says, you said yes, woman of God? Yes, 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 sir. Okay, so two yeses, one no. Anyone else? Um, I think I heard Sister Claudia say something, but I didn't hear what she said. I said no, sir. Okay, two no's. Anyone else? I say yes. All right, three yeses, two no's. God permissive will. Okay, we have a few yes. I didn't see. Sorry, go again. I say yes, sir. Yes. Sir Eric, you were saying something? No, sir, he doesn't. Okay, I hear Sister Michelle Page with Sister with, with Sister Betty's voice. You said you said no. What did he say? All right, yes in the background. All right, we hear we hear one yes from Sister Michelle, one no from Sister Betty. Sir Eric, what did you say? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, that's what we have been told. Sister Oriana said no. Say again, Sister Orita. No. Okay, so let me see. Sister Orita said no. We are now on Facebook, and Lady Marcy said yes. Sister Charmaine says yes. Sister Angela said yes. Sister Carmelita said yes. Sister Stephanie said yes. Right now, it is 100% yes on Facebook. Come on, guys. I hope I see nine people on Facebook. That's not possible when we have, like, so many fire carriers here. Every fire carrier should actually find a way to invite. That's the way it, 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 it should be. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Sister Nicolette said yes. Sister Chancel said, what is the question? I asked, is it possible... No, no. Does God have a permissive will? Sister Natalie says yes. Sister Chantel, what say he? Say, say you. I'm on, I'm on the fence, Apostle. Sister Trisha is on the fence <laughs> and we can't leave her there so we got to get to the bottom of this. Okay, Sister Chantel, now that you know, not sure either, Sister, Sister Trisha and Sister Chantel is on the fence, and the fence is very, very, very fragile. There's no such thing as defense, so we got to get them off the fence, right? Free choice, free will. <laughs> yes. Was that, yeah. was that yeah. Sister Eva? Who said that? The right decision. He'll, he'll give you permission. He'll give you permission. Okay, well, don't get me started, then. <laughs> Someone talking in the background. Go on, I want to hear you. Say again, say again. Driving, now you can hold on to the steer hold on to the steering don't look at the phone let someone else hold it go on <laughs> yes after you rephrase the question mm -hmm. I, said, I, asked, I said um it's permissive will yes right mm -hmm. i rethink and know that he, whatever he does, he get a permission from God. Mm -hmm. so yes, it is a permissive will. All right, then. You, you, you're digging a hole now, but give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Sister Claudia. It's either it is his will or it is not his will. 
will or it's not his will. All right, Sister Cla Claudia. Okay. So we are, uh, I love it. It's very interactive. Let me see what's happening here on Facebook. I need a Facebook reader in Zoom. All right, um, Sister Betty, go for it. My question to you was, what's it going to be? What does it mean? What does it mean? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, what's the meaning of permissive? We're going to go in and we're going to look at a few things. And that is the reason why I was hoping, I was hoping it would go exactly like it's going. Not a debate, but a godly discussion. That's what I love, right? Yeah, because I'm mm hmm Because I'm... Because I'm, I'm thinking, so if he, like, he give a command or he give a, um, that's his will. Mm -hmm. So, he's going to allow you to carry out whatever he told you to do. Okay. And then, so, <laughs> that's why I'm on the fence. Like, All right, don't worry, Sister Trisha. We're going to see if we can tear that fence down for you. <laughs> All right. So, as everyone giving his or her opinion, let us see what's happening on Facebook. Who's going to be my Facebook reader? Permissive, allowing or characterized by great or excessive freedom of behavior. Now, Sister Amanda, you jump ahead, but now that you have seen that, do you still want to say yes? Permissive will is when God allow... Um, I think you made a mistake, um, Sister Tracy. I see Iraq. <laughs> I think you said Iraq. I, I I know you didn't mean to say Iraq, so I'm gonna give you a chance to rephrase that. Okay. All right then. I, 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 do I have everybody's attention? Does it sound like it's gonna be a good discussion then? Yeah, I said no. Okay. No, I said no now. You said no. All right, sister. Uh, sister Trisha, jump <laughs> off the fence. <laughs> All right, so this is the thing. I was taught about the permissive will of God too. But see, you know me, I'm a little bit weird. I don't just go based on what I was taught. I, I ask him questions directly. Then I go in and I check the scriptures to see if the scriptures actually communicate what I am being taught. Not just going in and looking for an isolated scripture to fit a specific scenario. So I ask the question one more time. Operating in God's permissive will. Is it possible? I said before, did it make sense? But I'm asking, is it possible? All right, let's let's go here. And it says here, let ex ex let us explore God's perfect will versus His permissive will. So I went in and I looked for each word individually. I found the meaning of the word individually, and then we're gonna actually um, bring it all together in the end. Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay, so perfect. All right, sister, you change it again. We at no. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> no, I want to hear. I want to hear what your opinion is. Give me a, give me a stance. No, if, you're not, if, you're not on the, if you're not on the fence, you have to give an answer. Yeah, but I'm with Sister Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sister Trisha. Where you at? Sister, Sister Trisha just did the split. She has one leg over one side and one leg on the other side. <laughs> uh -huh. Go for it, woman of God. Possible for him to to work in God um, permissive will, also good will, which is different. All right, so I'm going to go in then, and I'm going to give you what it means by um, permissive, and I'm going to give you what it means by perfect. And even though we're focusing on the permissive will of God, because this is the way it's always shown, the permissive or the perfect. Now we're going to go in, and we're going to give you a definition of both. Then we're going to actually start seeing if this makes sense. I won't give you my opinion yet, but though many of you have already guessed what I think. You want to hear my opinion before we teach or you want to go into teaching first? Opinion. My opinion. After deep research, after deep consultation, I am here to tell you there is no such thing as the permissive will of God. Do not run yet. Do not review me. I am about to show you. And that is the reason why it is an open forum where you have the opportunity to ask questions. All right, I'll stick back on the fence and listen. Sister, Sister Trisha made a backflip and, and landed on the fence again. You know. But sir, I said that. Say so again? Where did you say it? All right, this is what I want someone to do for me. I am focusing, uh, I want someone to help me on Facebook. And so if you can read out 
what's happening on Facebook for me? Who's going to be my Facebook reader? Sir, Lady Marcia Godwara said she played the fifth. Oh, no, sister. Tell her this is Jamaica and this, and this is not America. <laughs> sister Marcia, I know you're living in America, but I'm in Jamaica now. We have the Jamaican laws. We don't have no fifth. <laughs> For sure, for sure, 100%. My, my thought process is that we have free will. I'm glad you said that I am going to address all of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad you said that you got free will and you didn't say God has two wills. No, but that's, what I'm, that's why I'm saying he allows us to choose. Oh, yeah. You see, that's no. the thing about it. No, 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 this is, this is the thing. God has a will, but because yes. you have... No, I don't want to say it yet. Sister Dora, you're forcing me to, t to, to, to expose the okay, thing, man. Teach, sir, teach. Yeah, all right. All right, perfect. So the perfect, we're going to look at perfection or perfect. Having all, say, having all the required or desirable elements, qualities or characteristics, as good as it possible can be. Perfect. That's what perfect means, right? It says it is, I wrote something and I can't understand my own, my own writing. Don't laugh at me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that one. But it says complete. Also, it says here, make something completely free from faults or defects. Make as good as possible. It means then, when you have the perfect will of God... It is the complete will of God. It's the, it is something that is untainted and can... So now you're going to actually have to tell me what the permissive will is. Is the permissive will the tainted will of God? What is it? You don't have to answer me yet. I'm about to go in. So we just told you what perfect means. Let me go in and say it one more time. Having all the required or desirable elements, qualities or characteristics, as good as it's possible, as good as it, it can possibly be. Sorry. Um, it says here complete, meaning there is no there is no ayah to go, there is nothing can be added to it. That's the highest you can go. Also, it says make something completely free from faults or defects. Make as good as possible. That means it, it doesn't get no better than that. That's it. Okay, so if we're not putting this in terms of the will of God, it means that we are saying that the perfect will of God is as good as it gets. It is pure. It is clean. There is no defects in it. It is literally expressing the nature of God. Can we say that? Come on, mates. You guys are already vocal. I want you to keep it that way. Okay. Now we're moving on to the word permissive. Permissive means allowing or characterized by great or excessive freedom of behavior. Mate, I don't know, but if we're going by this meaning, we're in deep, deep trouble. That means I don't want you to tell me what God permissive will is. Sister Amanda put it in the room. I want someone that reads clearly. Go in, read it for me, and actually say God's permissive will is, and read what the meaning says, please. It's in the room. Allowing? Come on, anyone? Who's going to volunteer? Sister Dora, can you find it? Yes, sir. All right, go for it. I want you to read what's in the room. Okay, permissive. God's permissive will is allowing or characterized by greater or excessive freedom of behavior. Which no, is not correct. no, okay. So now that you put that there, does that make even two percent sense? No, sense. Do you understand? No, sir. So yes, it yes. sounds good, but I will actually show you that it not only doesn't it make sense, it doesn't exist. Don't run away from me yet. I see people signing off from Facebook. You, you're like, ah, la 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 la. I don't want to hear it. I thought I had a permissive will. Stick around and listen, me mate, for a minute. We're talking Bible and we are actually having a Holy Ghost discussion, which means not a dictatorship, which means you have the right to actually disagree with me. But I want you to bring to me your basis of disagreement and don't just disagree based on ignorance. Who is in agreement with me? And yes, that sir. Yes. 
So it's a discussion. You have a right to not agree, but you don't have a right to be ignorant. That's right. Okay. So based on what we just heard, one is actually specific, pure, and clean, and one is saying, eh, hey, do what you want to do. Isn't that what he's saying? Yes, sir. Okay. And then we actually have... I went in, so and then I actually put here, it says allowed but not obligatory, optional. That don't sound like God, but I don't know if that sounds like God. It just doesn't sound like God. But we are here. We can still agree to disagree and have a discussion. Okay. So now the next thing, the only thing that makes sense to look at now is will so if you go in and you look for will it's going to show you person's will if their last will and testament and all that so you have to go in and find will based on the bible and not based on the secular because unfortunately in the secular bio dictionaries they have not given any any kind of account for the will of god anyone understand what i'm saying yes sir. so god's the will of god this includes everything that God commands and expects to happen in all creation. That's the will of God. An expectation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, I'm glad we said this. It's not going to be a long teaching today. That's why I want you to invite maximum people. I know it's going to be an interesting. Because we said God permissive will or God perfect will. We just told you what perfect means and we just told you what permissive means and now we I just told you what the what will means. I read it one more time. Can I do it one more time so it is fresh yes. in your mind? Okay. Remember this, the will. So I put in perfect. We, we I I looked for the word will, for the word perfect and for the word um, permissive. So we start uh, we started off with perfect. I've been all the required are desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it's possible to be. That means it doesn't get any better than this, right? Yes, sir. Doesn't get any better than this. That's the perfect will of God. It doesn't get any better than this. It is complete. It is perfect. One says complete. Make something complete, completely free of faults or defects. Make as good as possible. Now, if we are saying that God's will is perfect, so can we use then this actual meaning and apply it to the will of God that God, God's will is perfect? Can we do that? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, brilliant. Sir. All right, we have hands raised in the room. I want you guys to keep me aware of the hands that are raised too. So we have Sister Michelle and then Sister Mitzi before we move on. Because because I'm teaching, I might overlook you. So if someone can actually bring my attention to it, right? Okay, so Sister Dora, I see Romans twelve two. What are you um? Do you think that that's giving an option? I, I I think that when we say God's permissive will, we shouldn't be saying those two words together, and that's where the confusion comes in because we say God's permissive will because He's allowing you to make a choice. No, but that's the we thing. Should not be. And that's the thing. I'm going to show you all of that too. Yeah. That's that's that's. I think that is just Christian. That's that's a Christian cop out. Yes, sir. You know what I mean by a Christian cop out? It's a Christian's opportunity to actually say, "Well, God didn't say it, but He allowed it." Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay, we are about to pour water on that fire today. Amen. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so I just said to you again, having the required. Are desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it's possible to be. That's the perfect will of God. Permissive. Allowing are characterized by great by, by great or excessive freedom of behavior. Allowed. Optional. As I said, and then will. Godly will, not just will as in dictionary will because as i said you will not find the will of god in the bible in the dictionary you're gonna to have to search biblical sources to find that so this includes everything that god commands and expects to happen in all creation does that sound like the will of god to you come on then it no it doesn't i'm saying no i'm talking about no no i'm talking about not not what preceded i'm saying the des the definition here this includes everything that God commands and expects to happen in our creation. 
Would you yeah. say that that's correct? Yes, sir. Everyone would say that's correct? So, okay, all right. So let's move on. So we now know what is perfect will looks like, what is permissive will looks like, and what is will is about. So this is what I have said here. I said God is not double-minded. It doesn't give two equal options. So I want you to go in and I want you to understand that God gives an option, but you have a will. If you understand that, say yes. yes sir. God gives one option, but you have a will. Because there's yes. a will, you have a will and God has a will. And that's what changes the dynamics of this. And we're now calling it God's permissive will. No, mate. Right. It's your right. sinful nature, not God's permissive will. But before we go in and we actually, um, let's back these things up with some scriptures. We're going to be looking right now at Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20, and Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So let's first start off with Deuteronomy, please. You said it too fast for me, sorry. Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. I'm hoping someone is listening. Do not just dismiss it because it's what you're used to or because of what you want. But we had hands that were up with questions. So um, the hands are down now. No one, no one wanted to ask questions? <laughs> you change your minds? <laughs> it's good. This is good, sir. Okay. All right. Go on, woman of God. 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whether thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day, that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go and possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. All right, okay, that's 20? All right, um, I hope everyone was listening and the Lord said to you, I don't know, he's like, it's like someone say, I'm going to give you two options, but my will is for you to take this, and if you don't take this, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like he's actually giving you, he's telling you the consequences. He is a fully aware that you have a will because he gave it to you. Yeah. And then he's actually saying to you, in other words, do not activate your will. If you activate your own will, you will die. Jesus. Come on then, someone talk to me. That's, that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like in every single part of the Bible that people think we have been given option. He already told you that one path leads to life and one leads to death. He is even asking heaven and the angels to record it at this day that he's going to kill you if you choose to do the wrong thing. He is pretty much taking a hold that he will kill you if you, do, if you do the wrong thing. And people actually think it's his permissive will. It's his allowed will. God is saying, in other words, you got the right to choose. But if I were you, I wouldn't. I would. <laughs> do you understand now what God is saying about this permissive will? Anything that goes against the will of God cannot be God's permissive will. That's right. That's right. Because there's an option doesn't mean that there is permission in both options. Yeah. Yeah, the option is only there so he doesn't strong arm you into doing his will. The option is there so you will not be a cyborg. 
But if you choose to do something else, you have a right to do it, but you're going to die. He gave that option also to Adam. The day you eat from this fruit, you shall surely die. Hey, the fruit is there. And I'm not going to stop you from eating it if you want to eat it, but you will die when you eat it. So what we call God's permissive will is actually our will, but options given to people who have a will. But there's only one will of God. Now, anyone, I hope someone is following me so far. Are you following me so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there's no such thing as God's permissive will. Because if God has a permissive will, it means that God is willing to dabble in a little sin. Come on then. God understood our nature. He understands our nature. Thank you very much, woman of God. He knows that you and I want an option. We want options. <laughs> but then he is saying that since you have that nature of choosing, here is the option, here is my choice. Here is the options, but here is my choice. Come on, word of God, I want you to go back in now and read this from this perspective. I want everyone to listen to this because this is something that I really want to get out there today. Waiting for pairing. Let me see if I can turn you on and Bluetooth. So No, it won't work. I was going, I tried it before. It won't work. I wanted to make it a bit louder for everyone on Facebook okay. that they can hear. Can you guys hear Sister Dora reading on Facebook? Someone let me know, please. I think you can because no one is actually saying anything. You can, Sister Claudia? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yes, sir. All right, so we... Say Sorry, say that again, please. I wanted to say something. Oh, please, go for it. Um, so, if, if we're saying that he has a permissive will, mm -hmm. then if we also get, will get into trouble because it, we, we, what is allowed and what is not allowed. And that is a sticky girl. The truth is, it yeah. does, you don't even need to try and figure it out. It just doesn't exist. Right. It's like, what? Will he allow this then? Will he not allow this? You know, like, yeah. So the way it is seen is because we have a will, then that's God's permissive will. But that's not his permissive will. That's our option. Yeah. And God's will is not for you to follow your options, but to follow his will. That's right. So therefore, there is no permissive will. It's like me saying to you, hey, I'm going to give you two options because you are a, you're a being with a thinking brain and a soul, so you must choose. But I'm telling you what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Only an idiot would actually then go make a choice and say, well, he give me an option. Get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The day you eat from this, tr from this tree, you shall surely die. He didn't say you couldn't eat from the tree. No, he said you're going to die if you eat from the tree. His will is that you should not eat from the tree. The option is that there's a tree there and if you're stupid, you have the right to eat from it. Right. So unless we are willing to say we are stupid and follow our own will, there is no permissive will. Our right. apostle says, so can you say, Lord, I know you gave me will, but I don't want my will. That's what Jesus said, and we're going to look at it. Yeah. Not my will, but your will be done. <laughs> Not my will. Anyone that has ever brought pleasure to God had to deny themselves. What does it mean to deny yourself? It means denying your own will. Isn't that what it means? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the true woman of God. We're always looking for loopholes. Always looking for a way to get out of it. Okay, they can hear you on Facebook. Good, good, good. Okay, so <laughs> Sister Marcia is not actually, she, I, I think she's coming over to, to, to our side now. All right, let's look at Matthew 7, 13 and 14. There are so many scriptures I could have included, but I, I found some, some key ones just to bring the point across. It's not going to be a long teaching, so I didn't bring a lot of, 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 of scriptures. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. 14. 
Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. How did he start off by saying? Go in the straight gate. So even though he's showing you two options, he's telling you as well. Do you now understand that anywhere you look in the Bible, God will show you his will even though he's giving you options? Yes, sir. He does. He doesn't give you both will. He says to you, hey, enter into the straight gate. Because if you go through, the, <laughs> through that wide gate, you're going to hell. He's not telling you that you can't go through it. He's telling you the consequences of going through it. Sounds like he's, not he's telling you not to. He even went as far, this is Jesus speaking, saying, enter through the narrow gate, or the straight gate, correct? Yes, sir. Then he actually says, hey, by the way, it's two, it's two gates that is actually available, <laughs> but <laughs> if you don't want to actually go to destruction, enter into the straight one. Yes, sir. Does that sound like he is giving you that? Does, so what is the will of God in this section? To enter into the straight gate. 100%. So there is no question what his will is. But you know of a will also. So we now need to make a distinction between the will of God and our personal will. My will says I have the right to go through whatever gate that I want to go. Can you post the scriptures there as well, please? Um, the scripture, this one is Matthew, okay. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So it sounds like he is saying, hey, there's two options, but only but, but my will is that you go through the straight gate. There's only one will. It's perfect will and not his permissive will, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He does not permit it because if someone permits something and then punishes you for it, that is actually wrong. That's true. That's right. And that is the reason why I came today to show you. I'm coming to you, Sister Claudia. I want to hear what you're saying. That is the reason why every single time an option is given, his will is also presented. But unfortunately, people do not read it based on his will. They only see the options because our, our sinful nature says options. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, I do not eat the cake, but it's your choice. So you mean to tell me it's my choice to eat the cake they're forgetting the do not eat the cake part right. the day you eat the cake abc is going to happen to you and we literally skip that bit and go straight to eat the cake because i have an option all right sister claudia go on i want to hear what you have to say i, I want you guys to ask questions as we're going along too both on facebook on air and zoom mm -hmm. I don't have a question. I, am I, I'm still trying to get used to this new upgrade with Zoom. Okay. All right. No worries. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I had to wrote down myself. I says, For a man to choose God freely or to have free will, right? Mm -hmm. We were given the right to choose. That's man's will. Man has a will, and I say man meaning humanity. Let us make man, meaning male or female, right? Yes, sir. So man has the right to choose. Man has a will. Man can decide, I don't want this, but there are consequences of man's will. The first time man chose with his will was when the fruit was eaten, and that's what brought death into the world. If there is a permissive will, which there isn't, I don't want it. Anyone else with me? Amen. That's what's been killing men and women of God. We have a will. And we choose to exercise that will. Paul understood this, so he said, not I that live. Yes. But what? Christ that lives in but me. Christ that lives in me, it simply means that, hey, Paul knew that if he lived, he would be a straight out Pharisee every day. <laughs> Not I that live, but the Christ, but Christ that lives in me. Now it takes away your option. 
Because now you're actually, it says, be led by the spirit that you might not fulfill the desire of the flesh, which then tells you that you have a spiritual desire and a fleshly desire, yeah. a, a carnal de desire and a holy desire. But your desire is unrighteous, it's unholy, right? Yes, sir. Which is then telling you that you should not want your own desire. Yes. Your desire is your will, but it is not the will of God. Right. Every scripture shows this. Who, who knows this? Yes, sir. I hope I'm making it plain so far that there is no such thing as permissive will. So we have permissive will, but God does. Oh, no, no, no. We have, we have, we, <laughs> permissive will is that you're giving yourself, all right, you don't even want to use permissive will. You want to say will. Okay. Or you want to say we have options. God has a will. Yes, yes sir. Why do I not say permissive? Because... Permission, for someone to have permission, it needs a second party. Yes, sir. Yes. See, we are so conceited that we give ourselves permission. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't give ourselves permission, we make a choice. That's right, that's right. Do you understand now why I'm not using permission or permissive? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So we as human, we have a option, we have choices, yeah. we have a will, but because this does not originate with us, meaning even the options we need to choose from was given from a second party. Yes, sir. Because you and I are not the one, we have no control over anything. The biggest thing a man will ever do in his life is choose. Yes, sir. And then once you have chosen, you will be led by light or darkness, period. So many things that we think it was our choice, Oh, we are doing it. We are not doing it. We made a choice and then we are guided. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I put before you light or darkness. If you choose darkness, then you will be influenced and guided by darkness. If you choose light, then you will be influenced and guided by light. Anyone get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But in terms of coming in and thinking that we have... Oh, we, oh I'm, I, I, you give your children permission... Yes. That means it needs a second party. It needs someone yes. in overall command and control to give permission. Yes, yes. So in this scenario, we are like children. If you are on the head child came in and says, why are you out so late? And I gave myself permission to stay out late. <laughs> you already know what's going to happen. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? The same rule applies to me and you when it comes to making a choice for light or darkness. You don't give yourself permission because you are not a part of the, this. You are not a part of that setup. You can make a choice, but you can't give permission. So, sir, can I ask another question? You know you can. Go this, for it. This is um, this is why we have parallel destinies. No, you get it. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. That's exactly why we have parallel destinies. You have your carnal destiny and you have your divine destiny. Yes. And he's telling you that if you choose, you're going down your carnal destiny and you're going to hell. But if yes. you follow my will, you have options, yes. but God has only one will. Yes. I hope what I'm saying makes some sense now. Yes, this is good, sir. So don't choose, don't actually mistake your option for God's will. If God has two wills, that is as confusing as it can get and it contradicts his very nature. So the options are for you, but God has only one will. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let's move on. So this is what I have written. When man will is activated, it should not be called God's permissive will, but sin. Anyone understand that? When man's will is activated, it should not be called God's permissive will, but it should be called sin. Why should it be called sin? Because for you to actually activate your permissive will or your will... You must go against the will of God. You will go against the will of God to do it. 
Don't eat from the tree. The day you eat from the tree, you can surely die, but it's your mouth. Go for it, um, woman of God, Sister Barbara. Good evening, Apostle. Bless you, woman of God. I just had a quick question. For sure. Um, some, uh, I'm asking, is this uh, an example of what you're saying? Uh, something that happened to me, and I asked uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking to a man about it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, w I was praying about it, and I said, Lord, I say, um, you know, I asked him for this, this, and this. And he said, now, you can have that, but do you want it? And when he said that, it made me seem, it made me feel like he was saying, you can you can do this, but if you do this, then you're on your own. <laughs> you better say it. <laughs> I'm starting to laugh so loud, but exactly what he said. That's exactly a perfect example, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? That's a perfect example. Like, listen, Paul said all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Hey, listen to me. You can go in and do what you want to do, but you shall surely pay for it. <laughs> I like that example, by the way. I like that example. You heard what the woman of God says? She felt like God was saying you can do it, but you're going to be on your own. That's exactly what it means. That's what we call God permissive will. I don't know who wants to be in that position. I don't want to be there. Who wants to be in that position? Isn't that a crazy place to be? Where God is saying, well, you can do what you want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go on, Sister Barbara. And, and so within, I say within two weeks, the well, within a couple of weeks, the situation had changed and it was for my good. And I didn't even know that, you know, the thing, the thing that I needed to do was, was it because it hadn't even, you know, the, the situations in my life hadn't even, like with my grandson, me having them now, I didn't even know that I was going to have them. But because I chose to listen at what he said, when the situation came up for things to be better for me, mm -hmm. I was able to step into that's the way it works that's the way it works we should not mistake forgiveness for permission we should not mistake grace for permission anyone understand what I'm talking about because you might find yourself in a scenario that did not take your life it doesn't mean that God is actually say, do it, is saying do this it means that his grace is keeping you in a place you should not have been in the first place. Well, I didn't die, so Lord must have wanted me there. No, me. You jump, and like every good parent, God is keeping you safe while you're being an idiot. Yeah. Or like some people who, they're probably, um, they're probably saying, oh, their, their marriage is good, or they get mar got married to this person, and oh, it's working, and oh, whatever, and they say, oh, you know, because of they don't say oh it's because of God's grace why why things work out you know mm -hmm. even though it was ne not necessarily God's will for them. All right, so you mentioned something, and I want to touch it since you touch it. Can I touch it? Yes, sir. Marriage is not unto eternity nor unto damnation, but it can be. But overall, in general, it's not. I'm going to explain to you what I mean. Your helpmate or the flesh of your flesh and bone of your bone is not actually meant to be your salvation. I'm going to explain to you what I mean. The reason why it is important for God's will when it comes to a spouse is because when you do not choose based on God's will, you can have crazy endurances in your life. But if you remain holy before God, you will not go to hell. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Amen. See, God wishes us to prosper as our soul prosper. So now that your soul is prospering, he wanted you to have fun in your marriage too. If anyone understands what I just said, say yes. Yes, sir. So therefore, it's not like marrying the wrong person can take you. Only a mad man or a mad woman would allow a next man or woman to take them to hell. But it's not meant to be your source to eternity or to hell. 
Let no one understand. So when he actually intervenes in matter of there's a matter of your happiness and there's matter of your soul. Anyone understand the difference? Yeah, yes, sir. I get it. Yeah. Matter of your happiness, you can actually live an unhappy life and still not go to hell. He wants your soul to prosper so your soul can be prospering and you could actually be in torment based on the choice you made. Anyone know what I'm talking about? But God's will for you is that you will have happiness, that you will prosper as your soul prospers. So he doesn't just want eternity for you. He wants you to be happy in this domain also. Yes, but by some really mad measure, you went out and you married the wrong person. And that person is not fulfilling your happiness and not making you happy, even though your happiness should come from God. Then you are now in a position where that doesn't mean you're going to hell. It just means that you're going to live in torment until you die. Unless the person changes. Do you get what I'm saying? The reason why I'm explaining this is to show you that there is things that happens in the body for your happiness and things that happen in the body for your eternity. Marriage is not one thing for your eternity. It is for your happiness. So what about your destiny? No, you get it. You're touching the nail on the head. But your destiny, all right, you're saved. So you're a son or your daughter, correct? Yes, sir. But now you have your destiny. What is your destiny after you have been saved? Your destiny is to be in a position where you can contribute to the kingdom. Right. Why was I created? What contribution will you have me to do in the kingdom? Now that man or that woman can either enhance or actually take away from your contribution. But not from but your not citizenship. Not Say yeah, again. Okay. But not whether you go to hell. Or no, hell. unless you're going to not follow them. Unless you, unless you're stupid enough to follow that man or woman to hell. Yeah. But once you're still living for God, um, and you're married to someone that doesn't even believe, that's not going to actually take you to hell. You're going to still actually make it in. <laughs> you're just going to make it in. Maybe a little bit more grayer than you would be. You might make it in with high blood pressure and stress. But you're going to make it in. I make it in earlier than... Oh, you make it in probably a whole lot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's okay. go back to topic. <laughs> Alright, so we have Sister Natalie and Sister Trisha. Sister Natalie, go and then Sister Trisha. I would like to hear what you have to say. It's a person. Mm-hmm. I was looking at um, Saint Matthew there on verse thirteen, as he said, "Straight, straight is the gate and broad is the narrow way." I was looking at um, me and my sister was doing some evangelize in Maypen, mm -hmm. giving out some flyer, and I gave one to a gentleman. He said, "I don't need it. I'm going to hell." He so, is that mean he's already made his decision that he's going to hell? That dude. Uh, if if I was you, I would just put my hands up and start walking backward. <laughs> if someone has announced to you they're going to hell this dude knows exactly that's not a regular sinner that dude knows exactly what he's talking about okay, he knows exactly what he's standing with God is and what he's standing with the devil is right yes, so I would personally like uh, you're going to hell like I'm going to turn around and keep going like I didn't no, don't, even, don't even continue that conversation <laughs> that's like that's like talking to the devil all right when man's will is uh, um no sister trisha first before we actually move on to this go for it sister trisha it was from before okay so I, i'll read this one more time when man's will is activated it should it should not be called the permissive will of god but sin I should not be called God permissive will, but it should be called sin, because that's exactly what it is. Now let us go in and read Matthew 26, 39. I was going to say Luke 20, 22, 42, too, but they're the same passage. So truthfully, we don't need both of them, but you can put both in the room. So if someone want to go back and read it after. Matthew 26, 39 and Luke 22, 42, they're the same thing. We're going to be reading from Matthew 26, 39. 
2639. Yes. Okay. Am I the right chapter? Yes. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Okay, so Jesus perfectly demonstrates that we have a will. As a matter of fact, if you understand the scriptures, though God sent Jesus to do this, Jesus could have chosen not to. Anyone know this? Let, let, me, let me explain to you what the scripture says. He says, because he humbled himself even unto death. Then it one step further, he said, because of what he did, he was given a name that was above all names. So that means the man had options, but he gave up his will so God's will could be done. As a matter of fact, he just made it plain in Matthew 20, in Matthew 26, 39. He says, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He was simply saying, I don't want to die. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Jesus was saying, I don't want to die. But nevertheless, not my will. That means if you really want me to die, I'm going to die, though I don't want to. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. As I said, Matthew 26, 39. And if you want additional information about the same thing, you can go to Luke 22, 42. Because they are the same. Okay, here we go. So we are now actually... So I asked the question, what is sin? Anyone ever went in and looked for the meaning of sin? I think sin is anything that contradicts the will of God. Okay. So if we go out and do something that we call God permissive will, it sounds like we're contradicting the will of God. That's right. Which is called sin. Sin. There's no such thing as the permissive will of God. Amen. Right? Amen. So sin is an immoral act considered to be treason against God's divine law, God's will. Get it? Yes, sir. Are we getting the picture now that there's no such thing as the permissive will of God? Yes, sir. Are we getting the picture now that the enemy has crept in and has messed us up and given us this illusion that we have an option so that's God's permissive will? No. Because we are people with a brain, with a soul, a soul that is conscious needs options. Anyone understand that? A conscious soul needs options, but there's only one will of God. Okay. Amen. A, a Christian, so we're talking to Christians now. This is what a Christian duty is. A Christian duty is to fulfill the will of God, not our own will. Our duty is to fulfill the will of God. Be led by the Spirit that we might not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Anyone that is not led by the Spirit is none of his. Is not what the Bible said? Anyone that has not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. So, of course you can choose as long as you don't put God in it. And of course you can choose as long as you admit and you know right now that you're going to hell. Like Sister Natalie said, the guy he, she was evangelizing said, he's going to hell. Do not actually delude yourself and listen to the lie of the enemy. Do not go in from a place of ignorance. Your will is not God permissive will. If your option is against the will of God, that's your option. Your, your, your sinful option and not God's permissive will. God's permissive will doesn't exist. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Okay, we have a question in the room. Why is that term so widespread and accept, uh, accepted when it's not biblical? The thing is, isn't that what we're here to do, to re-evangelize because there's a lot of corrupted things that have, have entered in the Bible? In the body, I should say, that has entered in... The, the, there's a lot of things. The marriage bed is the marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. And they say, oh, go do everything depraved and nasty because you can do it in the bed. That's not what it meant. God permissive will. 
that means you can do some things because God permit he did not is not perfect but is permitted and then you go out and become the biggest nastiest freak that there is can we call a spade a spade that's the space, do you understand or why the definition is if God had a permissive will? Where does it stop? Sister Claudia asked that question earlier and I'm asking it again. Where does it stop? Where do we know? Say again, woman of God. Permissive will stops the hell. Yeah, that's exactly where we stop. We're like, yeah, this is a bit nasty. God, God is not God perfect will, but it's permitted. Go on then. Now you become a devil preaching God. Go on, Sister Trisha. So, um, Apostle, so that is why his will be done. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven because in heaven, God's will is done. 100% correct. Everywhere you turn in the Bible, you see that for you to please God, you must follow his will. And then when you choose not to follow his will, you might, be, you might have chosen, taken an option, but you're certainly not following God's permissive will. You are following your sinful nature. Two road before you. Pick your choice, right? Amen. Make a pick. Go for it, woman of God. But you've cut your, your conscience will bother you. I tell you the truth. Even the conscience can be can be can easily be be smeared, smeared, because if you go in and you consciously believe that there is a permissive will of God, then you're going to find yourself living in sin, thinking that it is permitted by God. Your conscience is subject to the Spirit of God. If you know that, say yes. yes. I could give you an example that most people might not want to admit, but it's the truth. If you fornicate enough time, you do not feel bad about fornication. Nobody going to admit it? That's true. It is the truth. If you lie enough time, you will not feel bad about lying. Yeah. And you always move the marker, sir. 100% you do. <laughs> you steal enough time, you don't call it stealing anymore. It's only borrowing. Right. <laughs> it's not killing anybody. I don't know what murder has to do with stealing, but go on then. <laughs> you will constantly move the mark, constantly move the mark to justify your action. But we are not these people. We're going to call a spade a spade. We're going to confront the things that are in us that is not like God. Amen. If you are... Someone kills someone for the first time, they have nightmares. Second time, they feel bad. By the third time, they're just killing like a chicken. That's what sin does. Go on, woman of God. That's why, so, um, that is why we get attacked by we, our mind gets attacked by the devil um, so much because he will say, "No, oh, man, you're doing the right thing." But, you know. Of course, he's going to say it. the devil will give you a justification and then go and accuse you. You're, you're, the devil is like a sibling that is is watching you do something and then go in and actually complain about what you did. God, God, look, she's fornicating after he told you to fornicate. Bastard. That's, isn't he called the accuser of the brethren? Yes, sir. Before God? So we must understand, let's get over this permissive will madness. It doesn't exist. We just have a few more lines and we bring in this to an end. I'm not going to keep you guys long today. Okay. So sin is an immoral act considered to be a treason against God's divine law, his divine will. A Christian duty is to fulfill the will of God, not our own will, not our permissive will. I hope to God after today, no Christian under the sound of my voice on Facebook or here will continue to talk about the permissive will of God. It's a lie that the enemy have actually um, implemented in the body. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Thank okay. <laughs> so this is the thing. There are always consequences when you follow your own will. 
There's always consequences when you follow your own will. That's what we call God's permissive will. If it's God's permissive will, who gave you permission to go to the, the school dance? Mom did, dad did. Why should there be a consequence when you've been given permission? It's a benefit, that's right. So therefore, the devil has fooled us so much that even the most intelligent people hear the word permission and still do not actually realize it. God, that means God permits you to do it. How could God permit you to do it? He says, it, 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 then if, if there, who's going to be held accountable if God permits you to do it? Lord, you told me I could do it. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're right. My, my bad. Um, you, you can go into eternity. We talk like God is one that, 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 that make mistakes. Right? God doesn't make mistake. Because of who we are, we have options. But God told you each time what each option brings. And he tells you what size he's on and what he expects from you. True or false? Amen. True. Okay. So this is a reality. It doesn't mean you cannot be forgiven if you have made your own choice. For example, you go out. God is a forgiving God. But you know your soul can be saved and your body can still be punished, right? That's right. Okay, let me give you an example because we're bringing this to an end. You go in. God says, abstain from sexual immorality. But your body says sex, so you go in, you have sex. You have a child you did not plan for. That doesn't mean you don't love your child, by the way. Let's make it plain. You know, could possibly have a sexually transmitted disease or infection that you did not actually ask for. And your soul will be perfectly saved, but you still need healing for your body. Come on then. Yes, sir. Which then says that if you had followed, if you had followed God's will, you would not have found yourself in that position. True or false? True. True. So God has a will and we have a will. And how a will should not be mistaken with God's permissive will. I hope that made some sense. We could have gone much deeper. But I don't want to keep these sessions too long. And I also want to give you an opportunity for another few minutes to ask questions. Then we're going to move on. So, um, Apostle, that means when we say, uh, if we didn't know who that's nonsense. Yes, if you wanted, uh, Sister Trisha, this thing of if I, if I had known. I want to know the truth. That is the consequences that is causing us to say that. When someone is actually involved in sexual immorality, stealing, killing, all of these things, they are not thinking of the possible. Unless your conscience is still, is still, is still, um, still active, you're not thinking about the possibility of being caught. You're only sorry you did it when you got caught. Yes. Do you know I have a policy? And I know most fire carriers know this. If you come to me for counsel, you must be coming to me ready to admit that you did something wrong. Uh, Apostle, I don't know. My wife found out I was cheating on her. My husband found out I was cheating on him. Oh, wow. I'm really sorry. I don't even know why I did it. How, how many times have you done it? Uh, about 15 times. Man, you do know what you're doing. That's like a full-time job for you right now. Of course you know why you did it. You enjoy it. You were attracted to the person. You wanted to engage in something sexual. And you did it. Isn't that the way to actually start off by actually... Um, even the Catholic Church want you to come in and say, Bless me, Father, because I have sinned. And then we want people coming to us trying to not accept that they have done something wrong before they can actually be redeemed. Even... The uh, AA meetings for drug and alcohol require that you take responsibility. The criminal system require that you take responsibility. And then we don't want to come in in the body of Christ and take any responsibility for our actions. Makes no sense. So this is what I would say to you. Let us stop making excuses and ask God, what's your will? Or be led by the Spirit. That you might not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Still want to answer a few more questions if you have any. Do we have any more questions? 
By the way, Facebook, if you are enjoying this, if you're learning anything, then put some hearts up, put some thumbs up. Let me know that, that you guys are actually enjoying this. What about you, Zoom? What about you, Fire Carriers? Are you guys learning anything? Are you guys enjoying this? Yes, sir. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, any questions? Any questions? If we have no questions, then we're gonna actually still we're gonna bring it to an end while it's still hot. No questions. Okay. With that being said, then we're bringing. I have a question. All right, we have two questions. Sister Chantel, Sister Betty. Sister Chantel, go on. Then Sister Betty. Me. Me. <laughs> What does it mean? Um, I don't remember the scripture. What it says that he became a sin. He came. He became a sin for us. He did. Yes, Jesus came. Remember, we have a debt that we could not pay. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So therefore, Jesus, we hold blood. And Jesus, not only he came in and says everything that Chantel holds. I'm taking it on my shoulder. Everything that Paul holds and everyone in this room, I'm taking it on my shoulder. Let their let their account be, be be an account. Put their account to me. What do you require of Chantel? I require her life. Take my life. What do you require of Chantel? I require her to pay for all the sins she has committed, and it and it requires blood. Take my blood. That's how he became a sin for us, a curse for us. Curse is anyone that is nailed to a tree and he got nailed to a tree so we could be saved. I hope it makes sense. Make sense? Yeah. Yes, okay, brilliant. Sister Betty, go for it. Apostle, I clap my hands for the teacher. Oh, you were clapping? All right, we're still I'm getting you. Friend. All right, no worries. Okay. Oh, yes, that's the clapping. Yes, you're right. I am, forgive me. <laughs> I just saw hands. I didn't see they were clasped and clapping. Go for it, Sister Claudia. Okay, sir. I have a question, but it's not related to what okay. you just talked. So, um, so, in Philippians 2, it says that um, because of what he did, right? Mm -hmm. It's given a name that is above every name. Yes. At the name of Jesus, everything should go. Yes. No. Jesus was already named Jesus. This is the thing. There's Jesus born in Bethlehem and there's the word that is eternal. It's man meet God. Let's forget that it's a man and God together. If you look in Isaiah, it says, For to us a child is born. And to us a... Come on, who knows? Son a son is given. So the son is given to us, but the child is born. And the government of heaven, of, 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 of the Godhead, will be upon his shoulder. That means Jesus was a man and he was also God. He was fully conscious as a man. He got hungry like a man. He got tired like a man, but he was God. He had a choice like a man, but he was God. And that's why he said, not my will, but your will be done. There are times in the Bible when you see Jesus talking exactly as the God he is, and then other times you see him talking as the man he was too. Sir, I'm not understanding. I, I understand the whole, I understand that he's both man and God, yes. right? Mm -hmm. and, there are, and there are times when he's speaking as God and he's speaking as man, right? Yes. Um, but I, I, I guess for me, so he was called Jesus. Yes. And at that point in time, he was the man. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. No. So so his elevation here, so he was elevated in the spirit. There you go. Not people don't By, understand. Yes. That, 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 that's, yes. Go on. So, when, so his elevation was in the spirit so that his, so his, his name as a man was elevated in the spirit. You got it. So demons uh, was already afraid of God. Is 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 that he made demons afraid of man? Oh. Demons was always afraid of God. But 
his humbleness and what he chose to do has now caused demons to be afraid of man. Sicknesses was always afraid of God, but now sicknesses can be afraid of man too. Because it's not the celebration of Jesus making an open show of principalities. It's not, come on, God is always going to make an open show of principalities, isn't he? Yeah, yes, sir. Jesus made an open show of principalities so you and I can make an open show of principalities. If you read in Revelation, you will see that they were kneeling before God and now they started kneeling before Jesus too. And they're saying that you are worthy because of what he had done. So trust me. Thank you very much, um, Sir Clark. All right. I, I did, did. Did I make any sense, Sister Trisha? Oh, me, sir. Yeah. I'm oh, talking with Sister Trisha, sorry. Sister Claudia. Sorry. That's okay. So, Apostle, so mm -hmm. as it relates to us now as human beings, so yes, no demons are now afraid of us, yes. right? So basically, um, um, our elevation. Don't if I. I don't All right. Know. We are. <laughs> We are as elevated as Christ is because not I that live, but the God that lives in me, or the Christ that lives in me. So right, so right, so 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 Claudia out in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I, okay, I get it. All right. So you being out in the world, you are not yet the new creation. The new creation is elevated. Jesus Himself said, "Of every every man born of a woman, John the Baptist is is, is the highest, but the least in the kingdom is higher than John." We who are born of the spirit and of the blood and of the water is greater, greater than any man that has a, a, ever lived before Jesus. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. If we have no more questions, I'm about to bring this to an end. I want to salute everyone that is here. I hope that you guys learned something from what we actually brought today and I hope that you can begin to live your life based on God's will. You don't even need to say perfect will because God's will is perfect. Amen. There doesn't need to be a distinction between permissive and perfect because the only will that God has is perfect. Amen. We will not be deceived by the enemy with him actually putting loops, loopholes in so we can sin against God. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So let us hide the word. Let us hide God within our heart that we might not sin against him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Fire carriers and everyone that is on Facebook, salute. Salute. I hope you guys enjoyed the teaching. If you have not yet gone in and you have not yet shared it on Facebook, go into Facebook and share it to someone. Someone needs to hear this. By the way, let me do a quick stat before we go. A quick check. Everyone actually agree with what was said or you disagree? You have a right to disagree. I agree. I agree. I agree. agree. Okay, good. What about I Facebook? Everyone agree or disagree? Agree. Okay, Facebook agree. Let me give them a couple seconds to, to write. Bless you, Sister Charmaine. Everyone on Facebook agree? Let me just confirm this. Because let me tell you something, it's not a dictatorship. I want you guys, you see, anything I am teaching, I can explain. But I want people to come in and actually, okay, Sister Betty here on Facebook agreeing. Agree, agree, agree. All right, family, I'm out of here. God bless you. I just want to make sure you. that you actually understood before moving. God bless you. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bless you. Bye. Bless you, family. Love you, family.